Hi all, this is Dave out in Western Pennsylvania, USA. I'm a chemistry professor. I upload some of my work to YouTube to share with others. And uh, this is uh, part two, or an update, of a wet cell that I've developed. I'm also working on developing dry cell versions. What we have here is uh, a small jar. I'm, I'm setting this up for the benefit of those at home or those uh, maybe undergraduate students or even high school grammar school students with supervision. Um, I have a small uh, jar here. It's equivalent to a 250 milliliter beaker. Now you see the red solution and what that is, it's a buffer, commercialized buffer that I have, pH 4 with a red dye, small amount of a red dye and I have it mixed with my distilled water which uh, runs about pH 6, 50-50. So in other words, I have a buffered solution that's pH 5. I found that the, uh, with the last one I set up, the last cell, uh, the pH did not change much over the course of uh, 48 hours. Now, in there I have a zinc electrode, and this time I scrubbed it very well with stainless steel uh, scrubbing to uh, clean the surface. So I have a zinc cathode, and uh, I'm sorry that's my uh, oh boy the zinc is my anode so the I propose at pH 5 there's a slow but steady formation under these slightly mild conditions acidic conditions of zinc metal on the surface going to zinc plus 2 now of course there's some zinc hydroxide on the surface and uh, that will react uh, at pH 5 but I propose that the elemental zinc is forming zinc plus two at the anode and the electrons are going over to a graphite cathode and there the reactant is in aqueous solution. The reactant is oxone, that's the DuPont, DuPont trade uh, name for potassium peroxo monosulfate. It's cheap, it's fairly benign, they put it in swimming pools, it clarifies the water, and uh, it's used in various, I think it's in OxyClean. And uh, it's pretty, pretty inexpensive. There are four companies that make it commercially. Now, I have uh, you can use a uh, graphite from a pencil, but I have uh, rods of uh, graphite. I don't add any Epsom salt. There's no magnesium chloride. I don't have to add that because the oxone is quite water soluble and it's rather stable in water from pH 1 up until about 9. Beyond pH 9, it's not so stable and will react and decompose but I'm at pH 5 and when the zinc oxidizes in that half reaction I propose that reduction of the oxone is occurring and it forms bisulfate which is fairly benign so we're getting potassium sulfate so the reactant oxone is also an electrolyte now with the ionic current we would expect the oxone is aggregating over near the graphite for reduction, surely. But in solution, the potassium ion is probably over near that carbon cathode because that has electrons, high electron density. So we would expect that the potassium ions would be over there and the, the peroxyl monosulfate anion is going to be over near the zinc surface right the anode so at the same time even though we have ionic current the peroxyl monosulfate has to go over to the graphite where it gets reduced and then it forms bisulfate now the interesting thing the half reaction for the oxone undergoing reduction is a hefty 2.71 volts and of course you know that the zinc going to zinc plus two is also uh, favorable I'm getting a voltage consistently of 1.68 up to 1.93. Now I set this one up and short circuited it before. 
This is an open voltage. I see no gas evolution occurring during the course of running short circuits. I haven't applied any loads yet. I'm going to be doing that, but I'm going to short circuit it. And what happens, you come in at about 30 milliamps. Right now I'm at uh, 26.5. This is a short circuit. Next I'll apply some small DC motors I have. And I have some that will even run on uh, one and a half volt, real mini DC motors. And of course we could hook up a couple of these in, uh, uh, in series if you wanted to get yourself to uh, using a small DC motor that requires three, three and a half volts. Now you see that current, that short circuit? You see how it's slowing down at 25.6 milliamps? That's pretty good that is pretty good. Now if you add magnesium sulfate to this water thinking you're going to put in uh, make it more electrolytic you're going to find that your short circuiting is only going to be down around 10 or 12 milliamps so don't add anything else except the oxone. Now how much do I have in this volume of water? Uh, to be non-scientific I've got about two tablespoons. Boy I like that bottomed out at 25.6. Now let's go back to the open voltage and look for the rebound effect. There it goes. So this is a very interesting wet cell and I will uh, come up with some modifications and work towards making some type of paste so we can mimic a dry cell and I'm going to be looking at use, the use of ionic liquids as well. Now, in passing, here is an aluminum alkaline battery that I've made. I have a tea bag with manganese for oxide, manganese dioxide, some activated carbon, a little bit of graphite as a current collector, and a piece of copper serving as the electrode for that cathode. And outside, I have uh, pie pan aluminum. It's been running a small solar jewel thief analog that I've uploaded a video on. It's been running for about three days. And the only problem I have here is evaporation of water and I have to add a little bit more 10% uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide and it perks right up. And you can see the surface of the aluminum is starting to, uh, dead center of the tea bag is uh, starting to oxidize, but it's still running strong. And uh, I have another video on that. And going back to this, uh, what I call the zinc oxone battery, it's a primary battery, you can't recharge this of course. See we're up to 1.46 so it's rebounding. Hey, thanks for watching, I'll give you further updates. Bye for now.